This special edition of Perspectives Weekly has been made possible with the support of our friends at the Red Returns Affiliate Program. Thank you very much. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Perspectives Weekly. I'm your host, Jay Todd, coming to you from the floor of the Global Gaming Expo. And boy, what a show we have for you this week. The questions around Full Tilt Poker continue to swirl. Rumors of a lawsuit out of Canada, and just this week, confirmation that they had found a buyer in France. But none of that explains where players' money is, right? Well, we caught up with the CEO of the Alderney Gambling Control Commission. They're the ones who licensed Full Tilt and recently revoked that license. If anyone's going to have answers, this guy would. So here's the interview. I warn you in advance, it's a bit long, 12 minutes, but it's got a lot of great information. We hope you enjoy it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the floor of the Global Gaming Expo, where I have caught up with Andre Vilsenak the Chief Executive Officer for the Alderney Gambling Control Commission. Did I get all that correct, sir? Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a lot of people watching this video who really want to know what happened with Full Tilt. We have players' money uh, that's gone missing. We have affiliates that have lost a lot of income. And Alderney licensed Full Tilt. Uh, the question of the hour, sir, is what exactly went wrong with Full Tilt Poker? Right. Well, let me start off by saying that one is always very disappointed and it's very sad that uh, it had come to the situation where uh, a license of one of the largest poker rooms in the world you know um, had been revoked um, people's lives have been affected by that people have put their trust in it and it's very sad when uh, when that relationship of trust um, has been has been broken the background to it is that um, as the regulator we have certain very specific requirements and I'm going to mention two uh, of those requirements to you. The first requirement we have is that our licensees should at all times inform us uh, of significant events, events that might affect their business on a day-to-day -day basis. And the rule is that if uh, there's anything, whether it is a court case or litigation or whatever the case may be that affects their business, um, uh, from a regulatory perspective, they need to inform us of that within 24 hours. So that's the first rule I want to mention. The second one is that our licensees are required at all times um, to comply with certain prudential ratios. Those, ra those ratios um, uh, have been put in place to make sure that our licensees are fully capitalized and that they have sufficient funds in place to pay players at any time. That means that they need to have sufficient cash to deal with player liabilities. All right. um, when the indictments were unsealed in, on the 15th of April, we were still pretty confident that there wasn't a problem. Uh, we have had no indication from our licensee that any significant events had occurred, first of all, and secondly, um, every indication um, uh, indicated that they had sufficient funds in place and that they were solvent. It was only thereafter when we started investigating that we realized that first of all the DOJ had frozen funds over a period of about two to three years without any of that being being made available to us or disclosed to us either by the DOJ or by Full Tilt, which obviously puts Full Tilt immediately in breach of its license. The second factor is that those funds that have been frozen over a period of three years in, uh, in, in, in accounts of payment processes have been um, regarded by Full Tilt incorrectly and have been disclosed to us incorrectly as cash, which is not cash that was available to the player. Um, and therefore, they have wrongly reported to us and misled us in terms of their financial position. Now, obviously, if one regulates uh, an operator uh, and you do your due diligence and you allow that operator to be licensed in your jurisdiction, there must be a certain level of trust. And that trust was in place. But when we realized that they have breached our legislation in respect of those two fundamental principles, the trust relationship has immediately been broken. 
as a result of which I took the decision to suspend the license on, uh, on, uh, in, at the end of June, um, subject to a hearing. Um, and as you know, the hearing had taken place over uh, the last couple of months. Um, there was immediately an application by Full Tilt that the hearing be held in, uh, in camera. Right, and, and that means that they wanted it to be privately held as opposed to public, and you were opposed to that, correct? Correct. I felt that in the interest of players and the public, um, who had such a, a, a prominent interest in this, it ought to take place in the public, so that the, the public out there um, would know what was going on. Obviously, um, Full Tilt argued very, uh, very well that uh, it, it might incriminate them in, in, uh, in, in the U.S., and therefore it was in their interest to, uh, to hold this in, in private, and that, that application was granted by the Commission. The other application they made prior to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the hearing was that the, the hearing be adjourned so that they could make a deal with third-party um, buyers who uh, had an interest in purchasing the company. And that, is it, that, that, that application was also granted. And ultimately, um, the commission, after 54 days when they reconvened, um, carried on uh, without uh, the indication of any serious buyer at, at that stage. Uh, they considered the substantial matters before them, the matters I've just mentioned to you, the breach in terms of informing us in the case of a significant event and not complying with their financial ratios. And um, on that basis, the Commission took a decision last week to revoke those licenses. Uh, as I said um, at the beginning, it's rather unfortunate. Um, but as a, a regulator, we have a responsibility to keep crime out of the industry, um, to act immediately. And although there's a huge player interest, we can't allow an operator to continue doing business whereby operators would just deposit more money and ultimately um, lose, um, lose more money. Um, there's been mention made uh, in today's media about a, um, a, a strong possibility of a buyer um, uh, signing terms with FTP. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I hope um, there's such a possibility and that it would realize. And uh, we've said all along that if it does materialize, that there is such a person who's willing to purchase Full Tilt um, and um, to come to us under new management and ownership, we would work with that entity to get it licensed and get it back on the road as quickly as possible. That must be in the interest of the players. Well, uh, certainly someone buying out Full Tilt would be good for players uh, recovering their money on deposit. Um, I think it's important that people realize what you had mentioned in the session, that you guys regulate by report, which means that you, you're in some ways dependent on Full Tilt coming to you with their reporting mechanisms that you have in place and being honest with you about what's going on, and that's where the breakdown was. I, I had also spoken with you off camera about the commingling of funds, the players' funds with the, the operational funds, and that perhaps as the, the, the Malta licensees do, the, or the, the Malta Authority does, uh, requiring there to be a separation. Uh, but in your opinion, this probably, because it's a re regulate by report environment, this probably would not have prevented what happened in Full Tilt's case from happening. No, and even if they had these monies held in a separate segregated account, I'm not convinced in my own mind that that would have solved the problem. Um, uh, you, you, it, 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 it's well known from the DOJ documentation that have been released that Full Tilt had indicated to the DOJ that those funds had been held in segregated accounts. That was clearly not the case. We were aware all along that the funds had been commingled with their own funds. We were never concerned about it, purely from the point of view that there was sufficient cash to cover player liabilities. Let's talk about segregation of funds. Um, some authorities think it's the silver bullet. We do not believe that that necessarily will solve the problem. Um, fact of the matter is that although funds are held in segregated accounts, you always sit with the difficulty that in the case of an insolvency, if the bank does not recognize um, that third-party interest, namely the interest of the player, 
um, then the bank has a first right, a first option on those funds. Um, uh, now, you know in the e-commerce world, uh, funds are being held in various accounts. And in the case of an insolvency, you just don't know whether the insolvency legislation that applies in that particular country is going to recognize the third party interest. Now, it all sounds very complicated, but what I'm saying to you is we, we, we have looked at it, we're looking at it again, uh, various other regulatory authorities are looking at it. Uh, there's been a lot of talk today about what is the best way to protect player funds. I don't think anybody has the answer. Hopefully we'll get closer to an answer so that this sort of thing doesn't happen again in future. Amen. Uh, Andre, one final question in regards to uh, the, the charges from the DOJ most recently I saw. When, when I saw the headline said Ponzi scheme, I, I didn't fully understand uh, how they arrived at that conclusion. But I, what I'm trying to, 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 to get at is that I think because Full Tilt Poker, as you say, told the DOJ the funds were not commingled, and in fact they were, and now they're gone. Is this what led to the Ponzi scheme charges? It's difficult for me to tell you why the DOJ has described this as a Ponzi scheme. Uh, in my view, I don't think it is a Ponzi scheme. I suspect it might relate to the fact that um, at some stage, when uh, Full Tilt was no longer able to get uh, payment processes to, uh, to process uh, payment deposits and 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 um, and fund players that they started um, allowing operators or sorry rather players to uh, to wager on credit. Um, I don't know what was the what was the basis for that. Uh, in my own view, um, I I as I said I don't think it it is. If you look at the definition of a Ponzi scheme, it is a Ponzi scheme. Um, uh, but you know I I, th I think it's a very emotional word. And it's something that um, you know would catch the eye and the ear. And whether that was the, the reason for using it, you know, I don't know. The DOJ says it's illegal, so it's illegal. They say it's a Ponzi scheme, so it's a Ponzi scheme. Well, I think what one's got to say, and and um, it was it was said yesterday by um, Congressman Joe Barton. Uh, Congressman Joe Barton is, um, is is supporting the the bill at federal level in Washington D.C. for for internet gambling to be introduced, and he made the point again, and I think it's an important point that as the legislation in the U.S. stands at the moment. Um, it is ambiguous and it's uncertain. Um, and from that perspective, it's not clear as to whether poker is, uh, is lawful or not in this country. The views, the, the views that we've obtained at the time that Full Tilt was licensed was that it is legal uh, to conduct poker here. Yeah. What, what's, what seemed to be unlegal was the financial transaction. And Senator um, or Congressman um, uh, Barton said yesterday, it's not even sure which part of the financial transaction was regarded as unlawful. So there's huge doubt as to the basis for the actions that have been taken. It's a great pity that um, the law enforcement people in the U.S. have not approached us earlier. Had we known that uh, FTP were, um, were in that particular position, that actions have been taken over a period of three years, we could have acted a lot uh, earlier. Well, Andre, I thank you so much for joining us. You've been very open, and I appreciate it. I know this is uh, a difficult situation to talk about, but I thank you for coming on the show, putting your face here, and answering our questions. It is appreciated. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, I can hear the sighs out there from some of you saying, hey, Jay Todd, why didn't you ask tougher questions? Why didn't you get in this guy's face and say, hey, where's my money? I would have really liked to, but you got to understand that this gentleman didn't even want to go on camera. He was trying to avoid the media altogether. He's got a lot of legal concerns, understandably, and he has to tread very carefully. I, therefore, had to tread very carefully if I wanted to get an interview with him at all. So, in my opinion, it was more important for me to get him on camera talking to get some of the answers for you guys than it was to try to really push him, get him pissed off, and watch him storm off. So hopefully we've developed a good relationship, and in the future we can use that relationship. Hopefully the new buyer out of France will be able to reimburse the players and they'll all get their money. We'll have to wait and see. We've done a lot of great interviews this week from the floor of the G2E. You'll see more of those on upcoming Perspectives Weekly. But for now, my friends, thank you for watching.
and play smart.